Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is probably going to get quite a bit of negativity. Um, that's okay. This is my opinion and I'm sticking with it. What could this controversial topic be all about? Believe it or not, the simple act of scraping the teeth of your dog. Um, I used to clean teeth as a groomer back in the late 80s, early 90s. I charged $10 to do it. I just pop all the tartar off the dog's teeth, call it good. But now vets in the United States have pretty much made it illegal across the country for groomers to do that. In some instances, this was a really good thing because trying to wrestle a dog that has a tender mouth because it's all inflamed with, you know, dental disease and trying to, you know, clean their teeth, that's really left, best left up to professional. However, for those of us who keep up on the health of our dog's mouths, doing an at-home dental cleaning can be just part of the health maintenance routine, similar to clipping nails, cleaning ears, and giving baths. I was thinking about the last time I scaled my dog's teeth, and I realized that it was when I had her spayed around four years ago. The vet had knocked her out for the surgery, and I asked if it'd be okay if I went ahead and scaled her teeth. Sure, he said. What better time than when she's out of it? He didn't have any problem with my methods or the job that I did, and I was able to be pretty thorough because she was pretty much putty in my hands. I realized after scaling her teeth today that this was the first time she'd ever had the procedure done while awake, and she did great. I'm really proud of her. I realized after scraping her teeth in this video that that was the actually that was actually the first time she'd ever had it done while being awake, and I'm very proud of her. She did really well, all things considered. I thought that she had had her teeth scraped once before in my lap that way, but then looking back through my calendar and stuff, I realized no, no, she had never had this done. But you can see that she was pretty calm and relaxed throughout the whole thing. She didn't freak out or have any real major issues. If anything, she got excited and wanted to play afterwards. I've scaled my dog's teeth for decades. I've had a lot of dogs and I've scraped a lot of tartar off of teeth. Um, I've never had a professional cleaning done by a vet. Um, I've never had a dog that needed to have a tooth extracted due to periodontal disease. I've never had a dog with nasty brown teeth that were tenuously perched atop red inflamed gums that were just waiting to fall out. I've never broken a dog's tooth during a cleaning. Um, I have, however, you know, accidentally poke their gums, which, you know, of course they flinch a little bit and sometimes it bleeds, but no worse than when they're chewing on sticks or raw meaty bones or, you know, knocking their teeth and their faces into each other while they're playing. My veterinarians over the years have always been very happy with the, with the health of my dog's mouths. No one's ever said, whoa, you got a major problem here. All things considered, I just don't feel like I'm putting my dog's health at risk by sitting on the floor and popping a few chunks of plaque off their teeth every now and again. In my opinion, the number one way to manage a dog's oral cavity is by feeding a raw diet. The foods that your dog eats play a huge role in his oral health. Um, I fed a raw food diet now for going on 25 years, and I've seen firsthand the benefits in my dog's mouths. If your dog isn't eating a bunch of carbohydrates and sugars, the biofilm and the plaque in his mouth isn't going to turn into tartar nearly as quickly. Um, add to that the natural cleaning effect that chewing a raw mighty bone um, has on the surface of the premolars and the molars, and really, it's just a win-win. According to NPR.org, recent studies have shown that without sugar, you won't develop tooth decay. And our dogs are even less likely to have tooth decay due to the high pH in their saliva, which prevents an acidic environment from forming and the demineralization of enamel, which would occur after that. Checking your dog's mouth every so often is your first line of defense. Be watchful for discolored teeth, cracked teeth, nasty odors and discharges, and any odd lumps or weird holes in their gums or teeth. Nip tartar in the bud, and it will not get out of control. A simple tooth scaling every so often, like once a year, every other year, while your dog is comfortably flopped across your lap, should keep his oral, oral hygiene in check well into his geriatric years. However, if your dog is an adult with a severe case of tartar buildup, it would be wise to start with a professional veterinary cleaning so that they can get down on the surface of the root to plane away the tartar well below the gum line. The average dog with a little yellow gunk stuck to the base of his teeth would be, to me, a candidate for a home scaling. Train your puppy from the get-go to tolerate having her, her mouth inspected, touched, and pressure placed on the teeth. Introduce the scaling tool. Sorry. <laughs> this which has a pointy end, mine has a pointy end here and a flat scrapey end on this side by gently touching each tooth and just sliding it back and forth near the gum line. By preparing for this grooming experience when your dog is young, you'll be able to keep him from being placed under unnecessary anesthesia and you also save money. Lots of money. Um, I've heard quotes between $700 and $1,300 for a canine dental cleaning. Don't be aggressive with it. Just try to pop the tartar off, kind of like popping cookies off a cookie sheet with a spatula. Take your time and stop if you need to. Cleaning one tooth a day until they're all good to go for another year 
It's totally fine, right? Tooth enamel is the hardest substance in the body, even more so than bone. It's 96% mineral, which makes it very durable. According to the Mohs scale, tooth enamel earns a five, which means it's about as hard, if not a little bit harder, than steel. Will a dog's gum bleed a little? Probably. Sliding the scaling tool up under the gum line to check for irregularities can cause some minor bleeding in the gum, much like flossing our own teeth after a period of time with no flossing. Might the dog be a little uncomfortable at first? Possibly. I know that I am uncomfortable when I'm sitting at the dental, the dental office, sitting in their chair, and the dentist starts scraping around my mouth, right? I, you probably are too. Will your dog allow you to do the procedure? Mm, that depends. I would never force a dog to tolerate a scaling session if the dog were truly out of his comfort zone. Only you know your dog and his limits. My dog certainly wasn't thrilled with me knocking the tartar off her teeth, but she never tried to escape or move away from me. Because I know her personality better than anyone, I was confident that I could do this job without overstressing her. In the video, I didn't do a fabulous job because I can come back and clean it up later date, right? No need to drag it out in one sitting. I can always do it tomorrow or the next day or the next day and just work my way through the teeth until every single tooth is nice and clean and shiny. But here is a disclaimer. If your dog has severe periodontal disease, by all means, take her to the vet. Trying to scale the teeth of a dog with a mouthful of infection and bacteria could prove fatal. Your vet will likely put your dog on antibiotics prior to the cleaning and extraction procedure, and being anesthetized is really the only humane way of dealing with severe periodontal disease in the dog. Kind of a fun story here. The first time I ever had a dog's teeth professionally cleaned was actually by my own dentist. Um, I think I was probably maybe 12 years old, and I was talking to my dentist back when I was a kid and telling him how, you know, my dog's teeth are kind of, you know, he's working in my mouth. And I told him how my dog's teeth are getting kind of yellow and gross and his breath smells bad. And he was like the coolest dentist ever. He said, you know what? Why don't you bring your dog in on Saturday and we'll see if we can clean them. I was like, okay, that'd be so much fun. So I told my mom, she drove me and my dog down to the dentist on Saturday. And he showed me exactly what to do, how to deal with it. Um, obviously, he didn't anesthetize the dog or anything like that. He, you know, the, my dog was awake the whole time, but he was a really nice little old German Shepherd. And uh, between the two of us, we got his teeth sparkling clean. So he helped me learn how to do this procedure. That's why I feel so confident in doing it, and I've done it ever since. Let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of a dog's head. So basically, we've got your, you know, your skull and your lower jaw. And we have four inside or four canines here, one on each side of the top and one on each side on the bottom here. And we have three incisors on this side, three incisors on the other side, three on the bottom, three on the bottom. So everything obviously is duplicated in this picture. Um, we'll have four premolars, and these guys are really small usually, and they start getting bigger as they go along. And you have three premolars down here, and then two tiny molars up above, and three molars down here at the bottom. And these are more like crushing teeth for crushing into stuff. These are for like cutting into things and, you know, tearing things in half. Um, obviously the canines are for capturing. These are also for capturing prey and pinching and holding onto things. So when we're cleaning our dog's teeth and we're looking to scale them, the teeth we're generally going to be worried about um, and focused on will be this tooth here, these little guys here, the canine. Same thing on the bottom, the canine, these little guys here, and that one. Um, some dogs will accumulate a lot of uh, tartar here on the front teeth as well, uh, around the gum line, and so you might want to check your incisors as well just to see if there's anything that needs to be scraped off on the incisors. A lot of times dogs don't have as much plaque and tartar built up on the inside of their mouth, so if you open their jaw and look on the inside, um, for whatever reason, maybe because there's more saliva moving through the mouth, the inside of the mouth, um, but there's not usually as much uh, tartar stuck on the inside surfaces of these teeth but you know if your dog will allow you to kind of pry its mouth open and look in there you might want to do a quick check and make sure that everything looks healthy and if your dog will tolerate it you can try to scrape little bits of tartar off the inside as well. Now when we look at a tooth inside of our dog's mouth what we're basically seeing is this part here. We're seeing this part of the tooth that's sticking up out of the out of the gum line. Um, these are obviously the gums here on either side and they wrap around the tooth. This is a cross section so it's impossible to show the gum wrapped all the way around the entire tooth. But what we see is that little bit of tartar up at the top here, right there and right there. When we scrape our dog's teeth, we need to make sure that we get down here, kind of under the lip of the gum, underneath here, to pop this tartar off. Okay, that's our goal. We don't want to just scrape what we can see here. We need to make sure we take our tool and just kind of slide it along the gum and feel for any catches or bumps or anything that we can kind of put a little pressure on and pop loose. 
Okay, so this is what you want. Here's your bone that surrounds your tooth with the root down inside of it. And you want to make sure that this stays healthy. And the farther this tartar gets, the farther this, oops, sorry, the farther the tartar moves down into here and pushes this gum back, it's also eroding this bone. And what you'll end up with is a bone, the bone that will be down here at the base of this root, which this tooth eventually will pop out of the socket or break off and, you know, cause a, a lot of discomfort in your dog's jaw. So by keeping this tartar plaque cleaned off of the tooth surface where we can see it and just down below the gum, this will all remain, generally speaking, will remain very healthy and you won't have a problem with your dog's teeth. Here are some stages of uh, canine teeth during different phases of periodontal disease. Um, of course, to start with here, we have just the healthy tooth, right? There's nothing going on. The root's in the, the, the bone. It's in the gums. The tooth's sticking out. It's nice and clean. Now we move on to a mildly affected tooth. Um, I'm perfectly comfortable cleaning this, a tooth that looks like this, and I want to make sure that I get down below this gum line here, right, and pop all this stuff loose, and I want to run my tool underneath here and slide back and forth and just make sure it's nice and clean. I'm not stabbing it down into the tooth, okay? I'm just going to where it just easily slides back and forth and I'm feeling for any kind of crust that I can pop loose until I can get all this tartar plaque removed and it's back to looking more like this. Now this tooth here, that's fairly severe. Um, depending on the dog and depending on the stability of this tooth, I would suggest that the average person take your dog to the vet and have this tooth professionally cleaned. And if this tooth looks this bad, probably the whole mouth looks this bad. Once you start getting down to this area here where this, this socket that the tooth is sitting in is getting shallower, this is a, a candidate for this tooth to be removed and extracted or pulled out on accident. So this is better to have the dog knocked out, have the vet able to support the tooth with their fingers, um, and then carefully remove this plaque and clean this area up so that the gum can heal around this tooth and kind of start to hold it back in place again. Good girl. Stay here. Stay. Good girl. I know. Stay. Silly puppy, silly puppy, always oh, so excited. Oh, it's so excited. and poke yourself in the face. Okay, Dave. Uh, 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 uh. Stay, good girl. Good girl. Stay. Good job. Yes, you're a good girl. That's a good dog. Stay. Stay.
not something she's familiar with really, and I didn't want to overdo her. But I got the majority of the plaque off, or the tartar. Wait, stay. Think. You can see her canine tooth here is clean. These crushing uh, molars and premolars back here, I popped a bunch of the tartar off of them. I cleaned around the front teeth here, the bottom ones, stay. Uh -uh. A little bit, they were getting a little chunky, these bottom ones, so I go ahead and clean those guys off. I clean these canine here, that one there, and I work my way back here to these uh, chomping teeth back here. So, in my opinion, this dog, now that she's getting a little older, um, I'd probably scrape her teeth maybe once a year, maybe once every other year, depending on how they go. Um, but I definitely, I definitely open her mouth and look in there at her teeth and make sure everything's okay more than that. You definitely want to be doing oral exams on your dogs. Um, frequently just so that you can make sure nothing's going wrong um, you know the way their breath smells yes it's not polite it smells a little bit like a dank pool but it doesn't smell like an infection either so you want to be looking for things like that um, any kind of weird discharges odors and um, you know anything obvious there that, that would look like an abscess or an injury or anything like that right yes you're a good dog she's all happy now she's happy <laughs>